right, good. I've already been recording on my H6. We're going to clap in. Yeah. There's your clap. Three, two, one. And we are. Hey, now, read all about it. Read all about it. There You've it is. That's read what all need. about it. You've already read all about it. Here's the real headline today. We are taking the week off. We, uh, we're going to jump uh, on. Burp. We're going to talk to you for a few minutes. And then we thought it would be a cool idea. Was this your idea or Denman's idea? My idea. Denman had a better idea, which was put together a best of. But how the hell was that going to happen? I don't know. I don't even know how to listen to old episodes. I've never heard one. Um, so that's not true. I do because I cut the promos. So I have to, I have to sometimes uh, weed through the whole thing. But anyway, we thought we'd replay our first episode ever. Did you already March, say that? March 10th, 2020. Literally, I would say that's literally the week things shut down because I remember I had a St. Patrick's Day gig, March 17th right. in New York. And I remember that was canceled and it was canceled three days before the gig. So we literally started this podcast the week the pandemic shut everything down. Maybe a little bit later. No, I know March 10th. No, you're right. You're right. Okay. All right. Calm down. Easy. You know, I have long-term benign COVID. So take it easy on me. By the way, my temper, uh, yesterday I went to Gold's Gym where I'm the smallest person by 50 <laughs> to 60 pounds. Yeah. And uh, they <laughs> have uh, a manager there that I've just never liked. He's a, he's a nasty guy. He's kind of like, He's just got a shit attitude. He's got a chip on his shoulder. He thinks he's a tough guy. And, uh, and, and I've only had a couple interactions with him, but I was never a fan. And so I, uh, they've got, they, they, of course, like it's gotten very corporate over there and they put in a new system. So instead of showing your ID and getting in, you, uh, you, you hold it up to a screen on this like space age looking gate contraption. And mm -hmm. it never fucking works for anybody for anybody there's like it takes everybody like a minute to keep holding it up to the screen and so, so even anyway, norm even normal sized people get tripped up they have that's right all right so i go yesterday and i had a bad fucking week like bad couple of days oh, i'm in no. a shit mood oh. it wasn't swiping and so i jumped over the turnstile and the new guy, york city yeah so the guy yells at me this guy that I don't like yells at me. And then he does this with his hand. The, the come to me, the come oh, to me yeah. thing. So I just stand there. I don't come to him. I go, what? And he goes, he goes, what are you doing? I go, it's broken. He goes, that doesn't mean you jump over the turnstile. And I go, fix it. And, <laughs> and we were yelling at each other. And then he said something. And then I ended with, then fucking fix it. And I walked away and I kept wondering if he was going to come and get me and uh, throw me out physically. And I don't wow. know if I go back, if my membership's going to be frozen now. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I'm imagining it's still not going to work at the turnstile yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and you're, you're not going to be hopping over and you're not welcome. No, I may have worn out my welcome at gold's gym. I think the uh, the average amount of weight that that gym bench presses just went up with uh, <laughs> canceling your membership. Yes, the ten and five pound uh, weights are going to get a lot less busy. I was the only one using them, guy. Don't you want you know you know you're going to get dust on those yeah. uh, fifteen pound uh, barbells and dumbbells? Come on, <laughs> dude. Did you watch Serena Williams last night? No, you know I'm not a fan. So, uh, but I saw the memes. She I'm a, won. I'm a huge fan, and I, it was one of the greatest tennis matches I've ever seen. It was just they, so emotional. It was so powerful, inspiring. She played the number two player in the world. She's played six matches in the last year, not tournaments. Wait, matches. she beat the number two player in the world? Yes. I'm shocked. I would have lost money on that. Yeah, a lot of people did. Because at Wimbledon, she looked terrible. She is enormous, and but she's yeah. in shape. She's just a very big woman. I don't know if you're allowed to say that anymore. But I would say that uh, I saw an interview, and they were like, 
it was god it was something like um did you come out here and you know maybe have doubts like you you know like weren't gonna win it was something like that and she just like like gave like a sassy look yeah and then you know everyone clapped and laughed because it was an interview like at center court and i'm like i, I sorry fair question you looked like a piece of shit tennis player three weeks ago yeah so what is so crazy about that question yeah and well, you and you got trounced uh or you lost anyway from you know a very lowly low-ranked player so that is a totally fair question and it's I just think her ego and her temper and she's a shitty sport uh, i'm not in she's a great sport she she has become a great sport she's become very nurturing to younger players She's a role model. She's no. look how many black players there are today because of her. Look that has how, nothing to do with she's a good sport. That's but, great. Everybody's supposed to be polite. That. See, here's the problem with you. You think you come from blue blood wasp. You're a fucking Irishman. Your what? father shoveled coal in a tenement in the Bronx. You're yeah, not stay well humble. Well, how am I off brand? Because you think tennis is supposed to be this thing where you never yell at a ref or show any emotions. That it's no, to be no, so no, no. McEnroe was my McEnroe was my favorite, but McEnroe. But he was white. Oh Jesus, Mac! He had a fro, dude. McEnroe uh, <laughs> and the world never claimed he was like you know holier than thou and idle and if you ever asked macro did you ever have, yeah he would always say he had doubts or he was playing like shit like he was real serena's not real she is real in the sense that she as she said last night she's had a target on her back since she started playing tennis and you cannot argue that fact because of that she's got a very thick veneer she's had to have a little bit of bravado to push herself through and god bless her look where it got her yeah she's also had a in addition to the target, I am not. I am not denying that. But in addition to the target, she's also had a sign on her back: "Do not criticize." And uh, like you cannot, you know, you have to watch what you say because it is a PC situation as well. And I think sometimes there was a double standard. I'm just. I'm just saying. Right. She got a pass. She fucking whipped a ball at a woman. Smashed a tennis ball at a line judge. Yeah. I how don't many care men, who does How many that. men did that this year? A bunch of uh, Djokovic did that this year. He got to come out so. and apologize. Yes, he did. He hit uh, one. He hit a ball away, and it hits and it hits. No, somebody, I'm talking about she looked at a woman, aimed, cocked, fired. No, that's not true. Oh, good lord! She's a terrible sport. <laughs> and by the way, many <laughs> many high school male tennis players can beat her, even in her prime. In her prime, she was hitting 125 mile an hour serve. Ooh. How many? How many men on the tour hit over 115 miles? Oh an my hour? God! It has to do with spin. Play. Forget about. It. I can't even go into spin. This. She's the best server it. in the game. She I is, can't even go into it. John McEnroe called her the best server in the history of tennis the other day. McEnroe got in trouble at one point. We can't talk about this. Why are we doing this on our anniversary? All right, let's celebrate our anniversary. It's, it's not been, even an anniversary. Why, been, why, why are we doing this on our lazy day where we're just setting up a podcast? Well, first of all, before anybody calls us lazy or resents us, this is we've been doing this for two and a half years. This is the second week we've taken off. I think you might be right. Yeah. We took even, off like right holidays? around Christmas. Wow. Right around Christmas, we took one, we took one off this year. And that was well, it. we know you're loose with the facts, but we we have hardly taken any time off. Maybe you're right. But yeah. uh this was what was it, March 10th? March 10th, my brother's birthday. Yeah. My step my stepmother's birthday. She's no longer with us. Uh, and that happened during this run. I can't believe it's been over two and a half years. Oh, your stepmother never heard the podcast. <laughs> no, it's, it's actually what killed her. <laughs> she died of complications. And, and by complications, that was their polite way of referring to the podcast. Yeah. She hung herself with her earbuds. <laughs> she would just pray, spread, 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 spread. Please spread. Please have them take off my ears. <laughs> Um, by the way, so I went back, I, so I listened to the beginning of the podcast and, uh, did you listen to any of it? No. You, uh, you plainly say and state that masks don't work. I did. Yes. 
which is great. So great. Well, I was parroting Fauci, who initially said that oh, fit masks don't work. It there was, was a lot of confusion. Yeah. Yes. So How did they cover that? They said they were trying not to have a rush on masks so the healthcare workers could have them or something? Right. So he said that they don't work. And I was merely conveying what our Surgeon General was saying. Is he the Surgeon General? No. What is, what is he? He's he the, the Surgeon General? No, no, no. Uh, no, I don't think he's the Surgeon General. Oh, What's my God. Here we are. We're the worst podcast ever. <laughs> Disease. He's a, the head of the... He's not head of the CDC, but he's the disease specialist. He has a cabinet position. He's the, he's the disease on sorry. He's a, a malignant disease on the cabinet. Um, I, uh... I'm not sure what else we talked about, but boy, we didn't know what was going on. That's for sure. And uh, I did think I was going to be a lot more productive uh, early on. I, I think I was pretty accurate in predicting how many deaths because I was just quoting scientists, which who knew how rare that would get. And what did you, what did you guess? I forget what it was, but I remember we have texts between Dickie, uh, Rosie's bagels, uh, Dickie and me. And I think the over under, it was either 600, I forget what it was, but it, it, that was even low. But I mean, I remember back then when you're like, this could, this could be a million people after, you know, a couple of waves, they, well, they didn't want to hear it, so I get it. I understand that. But speaking of Dickie, uh, I got some Rosie's bagels this week. My family was in town, and we got a Sunday delivery of some. We got some assorted. He does a jalapeno uh, cheddar that shows yeah. up in tin foil that you heat up and it melts uh, with some delicious spreads. And by the way, his locks are first rate. They are like New York quality locks. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So go to uh, Rosie's Bagels LA if you want delivery on the west side of LA. Now, you said you had two stories because I have no stories. Nah, fuck it. Let's not do the stories. What were they, though? All right. I'll do, we'll do the stories. I've never uh, heard them. Let's go. Two weeks after a 34-year-old woman in Saudi Arabia was sentenced to prison for retweeting activists critical of the Saudi government, another woman has been handed a record-breaking sentence for using social media. Nora Bint Seed al Qatani has been sentenced to 45 years in prison for writing a tweet. Wow. According to court documents obtained by Democracy for Arab World Now. I wish we could do that here to our influencers. <laughs> who would you put in jail? If there was one social media presence that you could put in jail, who would it be? You know, I don't follow it enough, quite yeah. but I mean, you know, I've always thought of this thing like, and there should be a, a good screenplay that does this subtly, but like where someone just arrives now after they wake up in a coma, you know, and maybe they went into a coma in like 2010. And it would just be like, you know, wh why is everyone taking, first of all, you can take pictures with your phone. Second of all, why is everyone taking pictures of the sky? But of course that's the pose when you're doing a selfie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you wouldn't guess that everyone's, um, you know, and I know everyone's done these jokes, but like imagine, if if it wasn't phones, right? Imagine if you were in a coma and you woke up and everyone was turning like, you know, Canon and Nikon cameras around and taking a bazillion pictures. And in restaurants, everyone on Canon and Nikons and was taking pictures. Yeah, like, did the right. whole country become Asian? What the yeah, hell happened? Right, right. Well, there's a really funny, you know, you know, uh, I don't know if you read The New Yorker, but there's a column called uh, Shouts and Murmurs. Yeah, and it's course. usually just, just like a one page comic. It's usually a humorist. And this week's was based on that. It was about this guy on another planet and his great grandfather is still alive and he's the last person to have left earth. And he's, and he's describing how he went on his first date with their grandmother and he didn't even know what she looked like naked because that back then people didn't first exchange nude photos. And it was a very, very funny tight piece and then I looked at the writer and I looked him up and it's, you know, Frank Rich from the New York Times. Yeah. It's his fucking son who went to Harvard, became the president of the Harvard Lampoon and then wrote on uh, Saturday Night Live for four years. And wow. now he's he's like a hotshot writer. And I mean, and I had no idea who it was. So I wasn't biased. And I was like, God damn, this guy's good. 
Nice. Very cool. Um, other story, Madonna. No. <laughs> Good. Did you see the picture this week of uh, Springsteen looking like Woody Allen? No. <laughs> you didn't see that? <laughs> really? Dude. Oh, everyone listening, you can just Google it. A woman got a selfie with Springsteen, right? And, oh, I thought I sent it uh, to you. And um, she, hold on, I'll find it. And she put it out there and she's like, oh my God. Uh, here it is. Can you see this? It's on Twitter. Let me get her handle. It is... Carolyn Madden, Caroline Madden, Kroll, Kroll, whatever. Anyway, here's the picture. You haven't seen this? Holy shit, that's crazy. He's got to lose those glasses fast. And what about the most unbruised Springsteen sweater ever? Oh my God. It's like he went to a costume party. Yeah. I mean, what the hell? Everybody looks like Woody Allen at a certain age. I wear Maybe. the bucket hat. I, I've been told Woody Allen when I'm wearing my bucket hat. No, you look like a pervert a long time ago, dude. <laughs> uh, here's a great story. Wait, wait. So I, I wrote some dumb little uh, jokes, which was uh, you have to have knowledge of both of them, but where were they? Like incident on 57th Street and misdemeanors. Sandy Hall, you know, conflating the two. What 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 are you writing jokes for? Uh, I think I put them on Instagram. You know, fun man, fun. Look at you. What? I'm proud of you. Wait, what else was it? Oh, oh, oh! Screen door slams. My daughter's dress sways. <laughs> <laughs> I love how this is uh, two and a half years in, and you're still your video is still freezing. I just. I bought high-speed internet access for my Ooh, office. Now you're animated. Now I see you. I still have to get the Ethernet cord. I got the adapter right here so I can take the Ethernet cord and plug yeah, it you, into my MacBook Pro. you me this unused adapter. For I know. Me. I just got to bring the Ethernet cord from home, and then we're good to go. All right. Okay. Another story. Another story. Wow. We're doing a podcast. Okay. Go ahead. A woman has discovered that- oh, A woman again? Oh, wait. Hold on. I got to plug in my computer. It's about to die. Oh, good. You'd think we'd have this right. Oh, you have no idea. My podcast last week, I had the Sklar brothers on. Oh. And uh, one of the Sklar brothers' audio was bad. And my so audio was mono. bad. It was mono Sklar brothers. Okay. We, we, we put out an episode that was way below par. Oh. Uh, and, I, and, I, and Midcoast Media, Chris Denman, has nothing to do with it. Not their fault. They tried to save it. It was just a bad recording. So my apologies oh. to the listeners. Oh, I thought you meant content. Got it. Hey, now. Hey, now. A, a woman has discovered that the man she has been in a relationship with for six years is actually her biological brother. Desperately huh. seeking advice, the woman took to Reddit where she explained that both her and her boyfriend are adopted. And after doing an ancestry test to find out more about their heritage, they discovered they are full biological siblings i am 30 my brother is 32 i'm just going to call him my boyfriend for the majority of the time while i type this i feel weird about this my boyfriend was also adopted and when we met it was one of the things we sort of bonded over we both didn't learn we were adopted until high school and we both were lucky we had good families we weren't passed around from foster homes our relationship was and still is great we understand each other very fast. We were attracted to each other quickly. I've never met someone and felt immediate attraction and familiarity like this. Now I know that the comfort and familiarity is because he's my brother, not my half brother. He's my full brother. The woman went on to explain that they have done everything a couple of six years could do. We have said, uh, we, have said we love each other. We've had sex. We've celebrated anniversaries. We've met each other's families. I'm just glad we both agreed early on that we don't want to have kids. So that has never happened. Uh, okay. I hope he's not as chatty as she is. <laughs> well, she's on a Reddit post. You know what? Uh, 
so they are right. having sex. They're having sex. You said that they're having sex, and they're not going to stop. I don't think they're. I think they're going to stop having sex, but they're going to continue to have a relationship. I wonder if you could convince. Let's like, for instance, let's say I was hooking up with my sister, and I got uh, a vasectomy, right? Yeah. Could I talk? <laughs> could I talk the law into like? You're gonna let this slide, right? Isn't the whole, the whole rule against incest is is about offspring, isn't it? Yeah. And we just do it in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fixed. I mean, do you know how careful we're being? Um, I'm trying to see if she's saying they're they they're breaking up. This has a Lifetime movie written all over it. I mean, it's very tough. What if that's your soulmate, you know? Jesus. Well, I don't know. Would you continue the relationship and make it platonic or would you break up and find another lover? Right. I was going to say, you don't have to you know, put yourself inside your soulmate, but then you're going to find someone else to spend the majority of your time with. Uh, huh. I mean, would it be become- this is a real it's kind of an interesting quite I know a lot of people aren't entertaining it at all, but like you you don't know each other at all. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm struggling because there's a huge creepy situation. Don't, of course, of course, but I'm trying to actually look at the other side as hard as much as I can. Um you don't know them. Does uh, it for some people it would make it hotter? To be, I have a friend, I'm not going to oh. say his name, but he is a comedian, and he was dating his first cousin. They were secretly having sex and then seeing each other like at the family barbecue the next day. I mean, I don't think that, I mean, uh, other than the obvious weirdness, I don't that weird. So a first cousin is one of your parents' siblings' kids. Right. So you're you're banging Aunt Joe's or Aunt Sally's hot daughter. Right. Yeah, I could see that. Really? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, I could see how it happens. Would I do it? No. Oh, how hot is she? Would I? I don't think I'd do it. But I mean, <laughs> obviously, you got to be real safe. It's not going to be pretty if uh, if the hot daughter gets pregnant. And she's, yeah, she's a Christian who insists on having the baby. Yeah. And she's 15 and you're 47. Mm. What? No. Um, all right. Good stories. Greg. Good stories. Good stories. <laughs> I felt like I, I, I was funny because, you know, I, I read my news feed and I came across these stories and I was like, fuck, we're not doing a show this week. These are great stories. So, all right, we did a couple. So that, 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 I think that, makes i think we look it's we're 27 minutes in i think we can say we didn't take a week off we did not take it's official we didn't take a week off and the podcast we're about to play i think is a, is an hour 20 yeah so i mean jesus christ what do you want from us uh um, no but i mean that's a nice listening experience and it's weird going back and listening to us and you telling everybody masks don't work <laughs> and, but then uh, nailing my prediction on how many people die and predicting, nailed it. predicting they were going to steal the election from Trump. It was a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> a lot of weird stuff. I predicted that, uh, that no, we already knew that. Trump um, was president. Yeah. How about right. that? Um, was I, did I already have a gig booked in Lowell, Arkansas on September 16th and 17th of this year? Back then at the Grove? I'm not sure. So you, you just be safe and you might as well plug it again. All right. And then New Orleans. Are you coming to New Orleans, by the way? I got to book my I tickets. doubt it. When oh, is it? Come on. When is it? The, uh, October 6th. We fly in on the 4th. October 6th? Isn't that like next week? October 6th is a, a month. Oh, sorry. It's August. I forget because we're, we're, so, we're shifted time here. Uh, all right. Let me look into it. I doubt it. All right. Are you in Chicago the week before for Owen's birthday? 
No, uh, October 15th, I'll be in Chicago at the Den Theater. His birthday is the third, though. How did you know that? I, I, I told you, I remember it. Radiohead album came out. Oh, well, now, right. now in the history books, it says it came out October 2nd, but I remember it being the third. Well, he's going back to college on Sunday. And uh, yeah. And I'm not Rain Man like. I don't remember when any album came out. I don't even remember the year. But I do remember, of course, that was the first child among us. Uh, we have four kids now, but that was number one. Big deal. And there was a watch. When's it going to drop? And I also was so into Radiohead that I knew the album came out. I think I might have listened to it while I got the news uh, about Owen. Huh. Yeah. Good story. All right. So listen, uh, we're, we'll see you guys next week. Enjoy this. And uh, thanks for supporting us for these two and a half years. Thank yeah. you for letting us take part of a week off. Were you going to read an ad? Oh, yeah. Let's read the ad. <laughs> well, there's no ad in the in the podcast you're about to listen to. Yeah. And Greg, this is your idea, but I think you have a good business sense. Yeah, this is our this is our sponsor from last week, and I want you to check them out. They're called Upside, and it's uh, it's 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 all about dealing with inflation that's hitting us all really hard right now. I just filled up my tank, and it was fucking hundred and hundred dollars to fill up my tank. Um, so it's a really easy app. Um, it's, it's, it's too good to be true. You've, I've used it. It works great. It's a no brainer. Uh, you get cash back, uh, to get started, you download the free upside app, use my promo code papers to get $5 off, uh, to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase, purchase of $10, uh, next claim an offer for whatever you're buying on upside, check in at the business pay as usual with a credit card or debit card, and you get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. So download the free Upside app and use promo code PAPERS to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Uh, use promo code PAPERS. Okay. Boy, uh, you committed to that ad. Upside's I mean, great. You, you gave them uh, nice love. Did I or didn't I? You did. You oh, did. good. Of okay. course. I'm very well, excited listen, about it. Also, I downloaded it and I used it. It's easy. It's great. There you go. Uh, also, happy Labor Day, everybody. Happy Labor Day. Um, it's a day to think about what unions have accomplished in this country for the working man and woman. All right. We, we didn't have to go. No, you and no political... I am. You know what? Unions have been decimated and there is a public opinion that needs to be corrected. Yes, there's been corruption. But big businesses are all joining together. They're becoming multinational corporations and they're driving down wages. They're taking away benefits and the unions are the last stand. Support your unions. And it's a beach day. And it's a beach day. <laughs> this is what I don't want to be talking about next week. How Los Angeles is on fire. I do not want to be talking about that. I saw a little blip on some alert on my phone. A fire, hopefully it's out a fire started somewhere okay. but la is going to be the hottest it's been all year uh this weekend not good but good for the beach <laughs> i'll see you at the beach we're going to the beach uh you going saturday and sunday i think so i may catch the second half of the day saturday and definitely sunday all right take a beach take a beach take a beach You've asked for it. We've promised it. We've teased it. Now it's happening. Sunday papers, people. Mike Gibbons. Let's do it. Greg Fitzsimmons sitting here with uh, what can only be described as the only take on the news that you really need. We got the paper here, fresh off the presses. It's the Sunday paper, which means, look, we all get inundated with news from our phones. Every 15 seconds, you're checking. And it's candy. It's a sugar high, and it goes by fast. The Sunday paper is something that I grew up with, and I, it's the only paper I get. It's the end of the week. It sums shit up, the most important they get stories. It. They get it. You can read it in the Sunday papers. Read it in the Sunday papers. Mike, I'm trying to launch a new podcast. 
Are yeah. they still listening? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, paper. What? They've already checked their phone and gotten four other stories by now. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Stock market yeah. has closed. If you want news from three days ago, <laughs> now this is your place. <laughs> if you want an antiquated delivery system for the news that you already heard, you got the right place. You want to hear two guys try to be funny and argue over issues that you kind of remember? <laughs> Go there. <laughs> and don't forget at the end, comic strips you never read in the first place. <laughs> yeah. It's the Sunday Papers. Well, welcome. Mike, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm psyched. Your voice sounds good. It's strong today. Yeah. Yeah. Neither one of us has shaved in like a good five. You did. You had a little date the other night, and I noticed that you said... We played paddle tennis during the day, and then we met at a party later that night. And in between, you did a shave, but you didn't use a razor. It looked like you might have buzzed it down a layer. Didn't do any such thing. Really? Yeah. And it was just a it was just a meeting thing, not really a date. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to blow your personal. No, life. no. But also, no. I didn't. I don't. I'm not. Are you kidding me? I don't mans. Is it manscaping? Yeah, your face? I thought you manscaped. I did not man. Look, wouldn't there be evidence that it's shorter? I have rabbi growth. I mean, like, I don't, I can't grow a beard. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't do any such thing. Comes in gray. Both of our beards come in gray at this point. Is there a way, guys do dye their beard, but doesn't that sure. dye your face? I would imagine. I you know, know, I just dyed my hair recently. Can you tell? The I can't, and I know that's the answer you probably want to hear. Looks good, right? It does look good. Just for men. They tell you leave it on for five, I leave it on for four. Leave a <laughs> hint of gray. Wow. Yeah, keep All it right. real. I like it. Well, don't they have a formula that keeps it real? I don't know. Extra! Extra! We all about it! Extra! Let's start off. Let's get into it. The news. God damn it. Obviously, the top story. Uh, um, Cheryl Crow has a new <laughs> album. <laughs> <laughs> and it's spreading. It closed down Italy. <laughs> She's that powerful. <laughs> they say it comes with birds. Starts with the bird flu. Yeah. Crow. Um, the Pope. Let's start with the Pope. That son of a bitch. He came out. He blessed everybody for upwards of uh, 30 to 40 seconds behind yeah. a plate glass. Yeah, I would. Yeah. It's like a sneeze guard. <laughs> at, a, <laughs> at a buffet. Yeah. And all the disgusting people under the sneeze guard. Yeah. Are you blessing us or going for some chickpeas? Ugh, this this <laughs> meek. Look at all the meek who are going to inherit this fucking joint. Good luck with it. I'll tell you what. That guy... Here's the thing about the, well, I will talk about it later, but The Onion had a very funny headline, yeah. which was, uh, what was it? Uh, that he wants to suspend uh, molestations. By wasn't the priests. It? Yeah, the priests, just because of the spread out of the coronavirus fear. Temporarily yeah. suspend, it said. <laughs> and it said, in, in light of the fact that the coronavirus affects older people. <laughs> That we're laughing about it. That's how crazy it is. That's how... Uh, you can only laugh. Um, I don't know about every, that. Well, you can't wear a mask. The mask doesn't help. Um, while you're molesting? While you're molesting, it doesn't help. I don't know. I think no kissing is a is a, is a a plus, not even for the virus. Well, it's also harder to pick the priest out in a lineup if he was wearing a mask at the yeah, time. Yeah, the boys can't wear a mask, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure, but yeah. I'm wearing a condom right now. Oh, no, just to do the story? Yeah. Yeah. Um, cruise ships, they say, uh, the state department cautioned American travelers against taking cruise ships as the coronavirus outbreak spreads across the U S um, quote, I don't think anybody should be taking a cruise right now. This is a very sticky pathogen. Once it gets inside a closed space, such as a cruise ship, it spreads widely. The, it doesn't have to be sticky. Everything that hits, what was it? SARS, bird flu. I'm forgetting others. They're, Ebola. They're always cruise ships. Always. They're yeah. like this giant floating Petri dish. Um, I think I, what's going to happen is they're going to, this one that's off Oakland, is that the one where it is? Yeah. They're going to shut it down, look at it, and be like, oh, forget Corona. We found the new one. <laughs> yeah. The new one is on that one already, I'm sure. Well, if you want to talk about a group of people that's vulnerable, cruise ship passengers, uh, not in the best shape. No, they bought a cruise ship ticket. That's how vulnerable they are. 
they've they've already mentally been been victimized. Yeah. And never mind, they need their walkers to get on, and all they're doing is drinking and eating sugar from buffets. Yeah. Touching oh, yeah. all touching the same trays of food. Yeah, under the Pope's sneeze guard. Yeah. And then, uh, you ever been on a cruise ship? I have. No, I well, didn't know that. Ah, uh, yeah, long. Well, first of all, there's really cool ones now. I have not done that. Uh, way back in the '70s. Uh, completely inspired by Love Boat, my dad took us uh, to a Bahamas one out of Miami, and we did that, and I thought it was great. Because also, he'd give us, like, here's whatever, a lot of money at the time, like five bucks or something, and they didn't supervise the slot machines. I lost my mind. I was like 10, and I went crazy in the in the, the, in the the gambling part. Yeah. As soon as they were in international waters, and then even in ports, because the Bahamas allows gambling. So once we were away from Miami, I just gambled like crazy. and yeah. lost it all, obviously. Yeah. All five. <laughs> well, it's five a day, I think, yeah. <laughs> I did one once. Comedy Central had a cruise for their party they have they used to have annual back when companies spent money on like annual parties Mm -hmm. well that was the thing about all the viacom companies is they never pay the employees and they were the first one to come up with like permalance Mm -hmm. where you work 50 hours a week without benefits that started with viacom oh yeah but what do you mean i was there I, i was getting 75 a day which was a good rate and nothing 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 obviously nothing else and working how many hours oh a lot but in fairness, it was one of those hot places. I mean, this is the this is the '90s at MTV, and you wanted to make a mark. So you you were and you didn't have a family, right? You know, and so I, it, two a.m. was fine. You, yeah, you were getting stuff done. And then they gave you perks, like they would throw parties, they would have retreats. Yeah. So this was a retreat on a cruise ship, and it was me and Jeff Ross, and we went on. And uh, I'll tell you what. Doing comedy on a cruise ship is the worst fucking thing in the world. Oh. It's just not set up for it. It just nothing is feels right. It feels just forced. And so we both bombed. And then you got to walk around the cruise ship surrounded by the people that yes. were at your show the night before. Yeah. You know, you're online waiting to get some uh, crab legs. Yeah. And they're kind of averting their gaze. Oh, totally. Yeah, exactly. And then I remember I lost a lot of money gambling. After bombing, and I was with Aaron, and we hadn't been together very long. Oh, wow. Like, we'd been together like a month, and I was like, want to go on a cruise? That, I, uh, you guys should not be together now. Yeah. Just based on that. And so uh, I lost a lot, and then she went, you go back in there, and you win that money back. Because I was really fucking oh, what upset. What a misguided couple. And I went in, and I won that fucking money <laughs> no, back. No, you didn't. And then I made love to her like she was a like she was a whore we'd picked up on a wharf. Jeff Ross eating in the corner watching you two. <laughs> Jeff Ross loves cruises. He <laughs> likes to eat 24 a, hours a he's day. He's a fucking happy guy. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says. He's a happy guy no matter how you slice it. Never seen him in a bad mood. I've seen, I have I was, a, you know, the executive producer with him on, on The Burn, and uh, I'm happy to say he's human, and he can get, like, you know, cross with, yeah. with certain, creatively, like you want him to. Right. He doesn't just take everything laying down, Connor, or, like, with a smile. Mm. Mm. Why is he in the news? <laughs> what just happened? What happened to Meghan and uh, Harry? Oh, yeah. They uh, just gave up the royal titles today. I don't know when you listen to this, but today is the day they're giving up their royal titles. They, uh, what'd they do? They went to England for something? They uh, went back <laughs> for their last, uh, I guess, sort of job uh, under under the uh, under their titles, and it was to see a concert. <laughs> so, <laughs> phew, they're done. <laughs> That's gonna suck to go to a con- like like a rock concert. No, in fairness, you know a lot of the concerts are fundraisers and oh, stuff. Oh, everything like. they do is a fundraiser. Yeah, so they go to the, they went to a concert to raise money for um, police or firemen or something like that in England. <laughs> but a concert. Why don't they have a? Why don't they raise enough money to buy guns for the cops? Yeah, right. I know England. Oof, they're getting some of that terrorism now. So those are the top stories. That's the front page section. Now let's go to entertainment. Hooray for Hollywood. Oh, here we go. Let's do it. A lot of good stories in entertainment, Mike. This is the section, guys, if you're still listening. Dolly Parton, who's about who just turned 74 years old. Who huh. looks fucking good. She's awesome. She she's the most beloved, one of the most beloved people in America. 
when I was uh, working on Carpool Karaoke, uh, I went to- we Can you were, try to list more of your credits throughout the podcast? Did I list others? Uh, oh, Jeff Ross. So uh, so now I'm even. So Carpool Karaoke, uh, was we got nominated for an Emmy or something. So I was on a red carpet and a guy then asked me, hey, uh, who else are you going to do uh, for Carpool Karaoke? And I literally didn't, I, I was like, uh, Dolly Parton? <laughs> and he goes- and this is like this gay reporter lost his mind. He's like, what? And we had no plans to do Dolly Parton. So then James and especially the executive producer, this guy, Ben Winston, hear about it. And sort of Ben especially freaks out because <laughs> he kind of didn't know, especially the hip quotient to her, yeah, like, yeah. that it actually would be a great one. To this day, still no Dolly Parton karaoke. And to this day, I would go out of my, my way to watch a Dolly Parton carpool karaoke. Are you kidding me? Oh. Well, you know, there's a docuseries on uh, Netflix about her that's like was like the number one thing on Netflix. She, oh, I want to ask about her tats. You know, she, you know, that's why she always wears long sleeves. She's oh, covered in right, tattoos, right. apparently. But, you know, I mean, yeah, uh, Jolene, I mean, that she wrote uh, Whitney Houston's Big I want to hear about that because I don't think they got along for a little I bit. I Will Always that. Love You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't she also write that Prince song? Oh, I don't know about that. Usually it went the other way, but I don't know. Met a girl named Nikki, I guess you could say she Dolly was Parton wrote- no, I'm just kidding. Holy shit. <laughs> anyway, she is. Uh, she wants to do the cover of Playboy magazine. I want to see her. I don't know if I want to see that. I want to see the centerfold, and it would be the first centerfold that goes out horizontally because her tits are <laughs> so down and out. <laughs> you mean vertically. Well, ver- no, it isn't vertically. Oh, it's usually vertically. Vertically, it's, yeah, north-south. Yeah. This will be <laughs> east-west. <laughs> Just her chest. Um, yeah. Do you think if you were a 75-year-old guy, you would be more apt to be able to masturbate to Dolly Parton than, say, like, uh, you know... Um, Anything? A Kardashian. Oh, I thought you were going to say more apt than a 30-year-old could masturbate to Dolly Parton. Well, I went to the Bunny Ranch one time, right. and uh, Dennis Hoff invited me out. Full yeah. approval from the wife. She said I could go. Oh, right. She said, as long as you bring... Uh, I was working with a female comedian, and I'm forgetting her name right now, and she said, if you bring her, you can go. So I went, and there was a couple of really old prostitutes, and I go, does anybody pick them? He's like they get more work than any of the other girls because older guys don't want to sleep with somebody their daughter's age. And a lot of the clients are, you know, in their hmm. 60s. It would be very different if that ranch were in L.A., right. where everyone is sleeping with people their daughter's <laughs> exactly. ages. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I think it's kind of like if you, I'm, I'm talking about you, but anyone, if you saw your you're still attracted, you, you, you know, you have filters on, you know, you, you can't see your spouse of 40 years or whatever it is uh, as how they look now. You're still seeing a lot of that youthful thing yes. you, know, you fell in love with. Yes. But I think also like I'm, I'm more attracted to older. I mean, you know, when Louis talked about in his stand up when he was attracted like to his wife, things, things about her, like there's, I think naturally, uh, I mean, it happens. There are exceptions, but naturally you're more attracted to uh, older and older as you get older and older, I think. I don't know. I think, and I do a to bit a of point. I do a bit about how, like, I still go back to Jill. Can I say Jill? I, no, I you said, can't say I the said last her name. Na- I said her name, and her husband wrote to me on my website to say that he heard me talking about how I still masturbate to her image. And I think, and I say to my, and I say, I think that might be a felony because at the time, because she was, you know, sixteen. And I go, but but no, oh, I don't right. think it is because I was underage when I started masturbating to her, so I think I'm grandfathered in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But he reached out to me. He wasn't mad. He was just like, he kind of just said it. He was like, I heard you're talking about Jill. As he's cleaning his gun. <laughs> and I'm cleaning my dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, take her. <laughs> uh, Led Zeppelin is in the news. Let's pull up a clip. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess it, it, this is an appeal because I think initially Led Zeppelin might have uh, lost the case, and now they. Um, and that, so I forget the name of the band. Was it Triumph or something? Uh, yeah. 
but they were accused of stealing a lot of songs. And if you go down the down the rabbit hole as we just did, it really bums you out how much music they stole. This is um, Bobby Parker playing a little riff. Let's just tell me if this sounds familiar. Yeah, Moby Dick. Oh, here's Zeppelin playing Moby Dick. Yeah, it's the exact same riff. So there is uh, there are videos on YouTube where you can listen to like a half a dozen songs that are not only the same melodies, but in some cases the lyrics are almost exactly the same. What's yeah. the one lyric that they flipped? Um, uh, I work from the original lyric was I work from uh, eleven to seven. Uh, you know, for you, babe, or whatever. And so you change it from seven to eleven. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but you know, and my and my buddy Chris Weinstein has that Spotify play. Do you have a, Do we have a website we can put stuff on? Anyway, uh, there's no. a Spotify. Chris Weinstein's Spotify playlist is a giant uh, list. It's basically the plagiarism list of Led Zeppelin. I mean, it's no less than twenty songs. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's really. Ugh. And a lot of it is. What's weird is there's all blues songs. Like he stole from Howlin' Wolf and uh, uh, what's his name King. Um, starts with an A. Albert King. Yeah. Um, but then he also stole from like folk singers. Yeah, big time. Well, Stairway to Heaven. Yeah, is that is one of those. And yeah. So uh, it's a bummer because I love Led Zeppelin and I remember losing my virginity to Led Zeppelin too. And it, there's something very fucking visceral about hearing that when you lost your virginity to it. You know? Oh, I every was, time I listen to Led Zeppelin too, I think about you losing your virginity. Well, yeah, because we were seniors in college <laughs> at the it was time with and each I told other. you about it. Yeah. <laughs> so... Check that out. But anyway, the story is that uh, they restored a jury verdict that found Led Zeppelin did not steal Stairway to Heaven. Now, Stairway to Heaven, I don't- Just pay. Just pay. Also, you're keeping the story alive. Yeah. Now we're talking about it to to tens of people who now know Zeppelin are thieves. Yeah. Like, let it- They settled out of court with Willie Dixon. They settled out of court with so many people. Yeah. And just do that. If you're living in a castle and you lifted part of a song, pay. Mm -hmm. It can't be much. Maybe it is. Maybe is that, I mean, maybe Stairway to Heaven, maybe the guy's asking for a piece of all time. So now it is tough to cough up, you know, millions. I don't know. What about uh, Usher and the other guy when they stole the Marvin Gaye song? Did they ever pay for that? I don't think it was Usher. It was- Oh, not Usher. Uh, Pharrell, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh no, they lost in court. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that was Gay's family. Yeah. Not only was the tune the same, it starts with the sound of a party going on in the background. <laughs> here's the best. Here's the best proof. Literally, you should just do this in a court. My kids had never heard the original, so I played the original. Like we love this song, yeah. and they thought it was the new one. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But then you can't tell. But then you had like uh, um, David Bowie. Using that uh, that that baseline, uh, Vanilla Ice took the baseline from the, uh, the Queen, yeah, 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 Queen. right, and Bowie, yeah. But then was that not stealing? He changed like one note, apparently. Yeah. Uh, but hip hop has its own history, right? I mean, everyone loves that Tupac, uh, California, and he did nothing with the. I know we sound like eighty year old men at this point, but he did nothing with the. Um, what's his name? Uh, it, it's it's a song from Joe Cocker. And it's literally that. No it's, shit. Oh my God. Yeah, I'll look it up. I mean, yeah, anyway, if you Google at home or YouTube, Joe Cocker, Tupac, you'll hear it. It's crazy. No, it's Cal. I mean, the whole thing. But he obviously just started talking about California over this unbelievably great hook. He probably figured who in my demographic listens to an old British rocker from the 60s. I mean, in fairness, you know, in the movie, um, Straight Outta Compton, you know, they show him come in, and that was already, I think, teed up for him. Um, and I think it was uh, Dr. Dre. And by the way, as I sit here, that might have already been very legally done, and they paid for it, and that was a sample that was available. I don't know. I don't know. I don't well, know look, I mean, we're we're stealing John Oliver's show right now. <laughs> yeah. Let, let him come after us. Um, 
All Jane right, Fonda was in the news because she's about to get arrested for the fifth time. No, she's been arrested five times. But uh, on Friday, she went out. She wears a red protest coat huh. every time she goes. She's branding herself. And uh, Is it a, mag- she calls a MAGA? It, Is it a MAGA coat? It's a MAGA coat, yeah. <laughs> it says, uh, keep keep Jane great again. Yeah. Uh, she calls it Fire, Fire Drill Fridays, and she was really talking about climate change. And I mean, look, she's 82. W- what the fuck does she care? Climate's going to be fine for the next six years. That's all she's got left. <laughs> By the way, the Democrats should just take the slogan, make America great again, and run on that. Yes. Like meaning five years ago. <laughs> like, and then the, and then when Trump, like, you can't steal it. Like, we didn't. It's like, you're stealing, you're wearing the hat right now, even while you're wearing the hat. No, we're not. Like, yeah. how does it feel? How does this feel? Where you can't even have a conversation because there's no like sort of base baseline for truth, you just make up whatever you want to say. I think I think Sarah Silverman put out an album called "Make America Great Again." Or David Cross. Oh, did I think he? David Cross put out an album called "Make America yeah. Great Again." <laughs> they should just start wearing blue hats that yeah. say MAGA. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we're we're gonna get to curb your enthusiasm later, where we. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We get into that. Um, also, Harvey Weinstein is in Rikers, which is. The largest prison in America. I don't know if you knew that. It, no, yep. is it? Biggest prison in America. There's hardly any space. I mean, it's all cramped right there on the river. Uh, it's an island. Rivers, and, you know, they actually, yeah. they expanded the size of the island oh, to they, make it bigger. They made oh, yeah. landfill. And they put barges around it also. Mm. Now, he is he in a barge? He Part is. Part of it's a barge, but uh, he's in a, he has a TV, I think. He has a TV? Does he have a plant that he can jerk off on? <laughs> That's all he cares about. Yeah, the power plants right nearby. The TV's nice, but uh, you guys got anything like a ficus? Yeah. And I'll water it. And a syringe for my uh, apparatus. <laughs> so he fell down. He says he fell down and has a concussion so that he can go to the medical wing and stop getting fucked in the ass. Oh, my God. Who knows? Do you think that that's like. They don't have him in the. That's what I mean. I think he has his own little private thing. Yeah, no, I've heard that, but that's only because he hasn't been sentenced yet. He's yeah. just in holding, waiting to be sentenced. Yeah. And then he'll go into general population. Do you think when a guy like Harvey Weinstein goes into general pop, it's like you get points for getting a guy like that, for fucking a guy like that? Or is there a weird, like, uh, I don't know. Everything I say is going to be highly inappropriate. In other words, I wonder, I wonder the take on him. It wasn't children, in other words, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know his worst. I don't know his worst offense. He raped somebody. Well, I do know though. Some of the rapes were the people he was dating for a while, which are, which are, which are rape, no doubt. And really, really, really bad. But like there's violent rapists in there. It's yeah. a, there's a different type of crime. Yeah. Uh, in some ways, God, I don't know. Just like, no, stop I me just talking wonder, now. Obviously. No, I just wonder if you're a celebrity, no matter what you did, if you're a celebrity and you uh, get in there, uh, do you get points for like, Hey, yeah. I, I tapped that ass. Oh, interesting. You know? Oh, I thought you were talking about maybe killing him. No. Fucking oh, him. oh, f- just fucking him. Yeah. yeah. Which could, maybe that's how he fell. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wants a concussion. Wait, wait, please make, please do it again and make me fall on my head hard. <laughs> I cannot remember this. <laughs> well, that's it. He's falling on his sword. He's doing anything to get in that fucking medical wing. Yeah. Um, you saw the story about DaBaby? No. I love what that. was that? There's a rapper called DaBaby, D-A, baby. Uh-huh. And uh, he apparently... Sl- <laughs> yeah, this is very... He slapped a woman in Tampa, apparently, <laughs> and it's on... It's, which sounds about right. Sounds and like an old Johnny Cash song. Yeah. <laughs> just, just to watch her cry. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was headed to the stage, I guess, and there's a lot of video of it. And he, I guess, like she, they got in a tussle or whatever, and he slapped her kind of hard. But so there's charges against the baby. But just to see the headline, like the baby slaps woman, it's so fucking funny to me. The irony was she cried like a baby. <laughs> you can't blame the baby. The baby don't know any better. <laughs> no one put the baby in jail. The baby. Well, and babies are in jail. You know, their cribs literally have bars on them. Yeah. He's yeah, exactly. He's going. <laughs> That's what they should make his jail cell. It should look like a giant crib. <laughs> he can't be in 
can't be in uh, general population. He's just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Who gave the baby a tattoo on his face? <laughs> I'm going to get that baby. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, P- Pete Buttigieg. That guy. The Buttigieg, not let, the baby. Let me let me tell you something about Buttigieg. It's tough when you're gay and the first four letters of your last name are butt. There it is. That's the kind of high-level quality comedy you can expect yep. on the Sunday papers. Um, but he is going to be hosting uh, Kimmel's show. Oh, wow. Jimmy Kimmel Live. Oh, all right. And he says he'd like to host Saturday Night Live. Okay. I mean, as a comedian, I just love how many people are slumming in the fucking comedy world. Do you know how many comedians are headlining clubs who are only doing it because they got Me Too'd and their acting careers got derailed? Oh, yeah, yeah. Piven? Well, I don't want to name names. Oh, all right. Not him. But it's... uh, But it's... The baby. It's The baby is out there. <laughs> How old do you think he was when he started? Do you think that that was his original name and he just stuck with it? I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a long one. Listen, yeah, maybe he hates it. Stop calling me the baby. Don't be a the baby. It's on your album. I know. Well, I have to. Fucking. That's how they know me. You know, most most rappers sag their pants. He sags his diaper. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Sesame Street where they are doing PSAs. To tell kids to be counted in the new census. They realized that uh, children under five were being underrepresented. So they're using Count Van Count to, to count. To count. Yeah. One child in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't count them when they're in the cage. Oh, uh, I think they're counted, right? Yeah. They're already inventoried. Well, there's Rose, Rosita, I think, is the Latino. And uh, she's bilingual. So she's trying to get the Latino kids to get counted. Ah. Yeah. I don't know her. That's a Sesame Street character? Yeah, Sesame Street's very woke now. It was always woke. Yeah, not I guess as woke, it always was. Not as woke as the Electric Company. Do you remember that show? N- yeah, I remember it. Way more... Uh, this, it, was not a ni- it was not as nice a block as Sesame Street. It was a few blocks down, oh, a little no more, shit. a little more inner city, I really? would say. Yeah, yeah, like definitely cooler. Yeah, I remember even as a really young kid, I'm like, "Whoa, this is this is cooler." Well, wasn't <clears throat> uh, Oscar the Grouch really just a homeless guy? Basically, I think. Yeah. 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 Oh, but you're right. Yeah. He lived everybody outside. was nice to him. He lived in yeah. a garbage can. Yeah. You ever That's been true. friends with a homeless person? Did you ever have like a relationship where you? said hi or gave money to the same guy on a regular basis? On Sullivan Street. And then there was also a kid. I wouldn't call him homeless, but he, on the Upper East Side, there was a kid who was definitely on the spectrum. I mean, I think probably very autistic is my guess. But he would wear headphones, which back then, it was like one of those big clunky headphones that that was a radio. Yeah. And had radio dials on it. And... Uh, one of his big things is he rocked back and forth a lot, but I would I would sometimes give him money on my way down to the subway in the morning. But what he liked to talk about a lot were those four swings in October, Reggie Jackson, four swings in October because four seventy seven. I think it was four at bats in a row. He had a home run yeah. in the playoffs, and uh, it was it was years earlier. But this kid couldn't stop talking about it every single day. <laughs> And so I'm like, four swings, like four swings. And then I'd give him money. <laughs> Maybe I was talking about, it. now I'm looking back on it. He might have just been repeating what I was saying. I guess I didn't help him. And he's talking to his friends, rocking. Yeah. Yeah, there's this guy, great guy, he gives me money. <laughs> yeah. But God, he's fucking obsessed yeah. with. Oh, here he comes. Here comes four swings guy again. All right, here, hold on. I have to fucking scream it back at him. It's 1981, I think. It's, yeah. uh, it's time to move on. Yeah, exactly. By the way, that's a guess on 77. I'll look it up. I think it was 77. Mm-hmm. That's, is that what you guessed? That's what I guessed. I think it's a, I think it's a very good guess. Yeah. Let's see if we can name the entire Yankees roster from 1977. Catfish Hunter, still alive? I don't think so. Was he? Maybe. But there was Ron White, Mickey Rivers, and I can't name anyone now. Um, Reggie know. Jackson. Yeah, of course. Are you looking it up? No. Um, 
Ron Guidry. Um, uh, Cat, Catfish Hunter, did you say that? Didn't say that. Dave Kingman. You said Thurman Munson. Yeah. Oh, Craig Nettles at third. Right. Big time. Lou Pinella. Yeah. Holy shit. This, Who then went this on is impressing coach. me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. And that, that was one of the first. They're not booing. They're saying Lou. Yeah. That was one of the first ones yeah, before right. Bruce. Um, Caitlin. It's Caitlin. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, I could find more if I right. Oh, Bucky Dent. Bucky Dent, the shortstop. With the uh, the Red Sox killer. Uh, let's get to some reviews. We've got uh, TV reviews first. If you haven't seen The Outsider yet, I have watched the first seven of nine. Oh, did we look her up yet? Does she have an EGOT, the woman? Oh, God, in she's the outsider? good. The outsider? I was into The Outsider for like two episodes, and then I started to really fade on the third, and then they introduced this character, a uh, black woman who's African-American. And, Cynthia uh, Arri- Arrivo? Erivo? And she fucking breathes life into this series. I mean, she is a one-woman show. She's playing someone who's a little spectrumy, and most actors don't know, take Tom Cruise, for instance, in Rain Man, they don't know how to underplay it. They just, the, the, the autism takes over the whole fucking character, and it's unwatchable. I walked out of Rain Man. But she plays it really fucking well. And uh, and we're wondering, has she got an EGOT? Okay. An EGOT, if you don't know, is an Emmy, uh, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Holy shit, she's torn and there's about. Only about there's only about she's got a Grammy. people that have it. She's got a Grammy. She's got a Tony. She's got two Oscar nominations, but she did not win. Does she have an Emmy? Um... It doesn't. She could get nominated for this for the Emmy. Why wouldn't it list so she's Emmy got a award go. here? She's got to go. Well, now she could. Yeah, now she could. Uh, right. <laughs> I guess she does. Yeah. No, she's got a GT. Oh. Grammy and a Tony. I guess so. I don't know. For some reason, I thought she also had an Emmy. Look up how many people have EGOTs. I'm curious. Oh, what well, do you, I, guess no, how I know many. it well. I, I guess know how it well. Many. Well, this is the problem. Some of them are not quite. Pure in my They're estimation. They're daytime Emmys, some of them. Oh, yeah, right. That, but no, no. But there's also people can get two awards for the same performance, which is bullshit. So if you're in Oklahoma and you win the Tony, then when they put the cast album out, you get your Grammy. I don't, oh, I, I don't think those should be counted. Yeah. And that's how what's his name just got one. Uh, John Legend. I have the don't look it up. I'll tell you how many. Guess how many there are. Well, there aren't that many pure ones. Uh, also, this doesn't count. Like Streisand, fucker. She's got a honorary Oscar. Oh, that yeah, shouldn't that doesn't count. count. Right. No. So go ahead. I don't know how many pure ones there are. Here's the pure ones. Fifteen. I in there. There's not pure ones. Go ahead. What, what are some of them? Uh, I'll list the ones you you heard of. Rita Moreno. John I think Gilgood. hers is legit. Yeah, no, because underneath it says winners including non-competitive awards. Where Barbara Streisand, yeah, but you're Liza not Minnelli. counting my thing, which is same performance gets two awards. Um, Audrey Hepburn, she turned down a Tony Award. Did you know that? No. Yep. Why? Um, I forget. She she's badass though. Because she's a lesbian, she just like turning down a guy named Tony. Oh, all right. That's all right. That works. Uh, Audrey. Mel Brooks got an E. Got. Uh, Mike Nichols. Whoopi Goldberg. But sometimes which is they also these... read their they read their memoir and that gets them a Grammy. Yeah. That's not who I'm I'm picturing like the that fucking four, you know, four, whatever you call it, uh weapon, like you know, yeah. threat, quadruple yeah, threat. Like, what did Whoopi Goldberg win a Grammy for? She must have been reading must have been an audiobook. That's what I think. Yeah. That's what I think. Uh also her Oscars for Ghost doesn't count. John Legend has an EGOT? That's what I mean. But he got two for Broadway. Yeah, he got an, an he got a uh, Gram. He would want a Grammy anyway, though, right? Oh, also, yeah. Sometimes they get an Emmy from a Broadway thing. Whatever. We're spending too much time on this. All right. But yeah, let's go to some other reviews. Uh, oh, so check out The Outsider. It's very good. Um, I saw the movie. Oh, we're on TV. Malcolm X is a documentary. Oh yeah, how is that? Well, this is the problem with documentaries. It's I like it. I'm on board, but. And it's fascinating. He's fascinating. But um, do you know his wife? 
I don't know how long after he was killed. Was I, it was it one of the Kardashians? Sorry? His wife? <laughs> wasn't quite. <laughs> and God, I hope it wasn't the day of. But she was dressed in a... Anyway, I was trying to figure that out. I was also dozing a little. I was watching it too late last night. But I have to go back and watch it. But she was interviewed and she's like, it's... it's oh, they were asking who killed him and all this stuff. It's like, well, you know, they're uh, trying to pin on him like that uh, he might have brought this on himself and that he might have like, oh, it was something like that. And she goes, um, cause his house was massively firebombed. Like they bombed his house. They're like, they said he like bombed his own house. Well, maybe now they're going to say he killed him. He shot himself with five guns hmm. or four guns. I think four bullets, different types of bullets were in them. Um, but you want to know the an interesting thing she said when, uh, when the, she was talking about when he was bombed, as the reason, because his house was like fucking, you saw like shit out on the street and all the windows were blown out and it was fire. She goes, like he would bomb his own house. Like we we didn't have insurance like for the furniture. She she started to detail things like chairs. And you just realize like, oh, it's different than today where if you're the slightest bit famous, that just means you have tons of money also. Yeah. And he had nothing but speaking engagements, selling out places clearly they you know they weren't charging or it was so minimal because it was for the public service yeah. and he had a movement and he was moving but it really was like it stood out to me that one of her rationale for proof that he didn't bomb his own apartment was they lost furniture <laughs> but you also have to think that he would get pretty steep discounts at any store on Malcolm X Boulevard don't you think <laughs> I, probably <laughs> Yeah, and there's one in every city. That's a good point. I it's, remember uh, Chris Rock had a joke. He's like, "You always know if you're if you're on Mount Martin Luther King Boulevard, you're in a bad neighborhood." Yeah, he's like, "I don't care what city you're in." And if you're on Malcolm X Boulevard, you better try to find uh, <laughs> you better find Martin Luther King Boulevard. <laughs> Get the fuck out of there. So Malcolm X documentary, but this is one of the problems with documentaries is when I see it's like six parts or four parts. I'm in, I know I'm in for a slower burn than I want. I think a lot of documentaries can be a documentary. Yes, absolutely. And or two parts. What was the one, the last one on HBO that uh, Errol Morris did? So stretched Could out. Could have been one fucking episode. Would have been a great episode. Yep. What was it called? It was about yeah. mind control <sighs> and how they used uh, LSD on an FBI guy to try to get him to do I'm stuff. I'm forgetting the name of it, yep. Um, I saw McMillions. Did you see that? That's another one that's going a little going slow real for me. Real slow. They love that one They love the guy. guy. They think he's charming. He is charming. He's not that fucking charming. No, but you're also judging him, and it's fun to judge him like we're doing, so they know that, so they just leaned into a... Yeah. Yep, tell your jokes. Tell, right. Yep, go ahead. Make I'm just shocked that, Mc, if you don't know the story... Um, the Monopoly game that McDonald's did um, was rigged. I just assume all of those are rigged. I, I mean, know. like, you, you really are going to win a fucking million dollars from a milkshake? Yeah. Or the lottery? Or the fact that people that are making $4 an hour are not going to grab those fucking playing pieces? I don't feel ripped off. All right, so the lottery... It's like, obviously, it has to be of a board. I get all that. But psychologically, feeling gypped, which is now a word you're not allowed to use. But psycho- Why? Because the gypsies. Yeah, you got you to look do out. Do they have a voice? <laughs> you gotta get, well, by the way, do they have a voice? They have the number one heavyweight boxer in the world now. He's a real gypsy? He's an Irish gypsy. Oh, I didn't know that. Like Sean, like, uh, what's his name? Not Sean Penn. Like Brad Pitt played yeah. in Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Or no, no. Uh, it, what was the... Uh, the other movie he did, the same, the British guy. Yeah. I'll get in a minute. So, yeah, he, it's, and they've been officially designated an indigenous, like, class. Wow. Yes. I love offi- that. No, it's awesome. It's an official uh, recognition of them as a population in Ireland. That's great. And his dad was one, even though technically this guy was born in, I just read an article on him, technically he was born in England. Yeah, he's a gypsy. And, uh, yeah, you can't say the word gypped in. Oh, by the way, I've learned a lot because I was writing that, I'm writing the sitcom on an HR department. You can't say basket case anymore. Why? Do you know what basket case means? I guess. Basket. Would they used to confine people in baskets? Uh, you could say that. 
a basket case was like uh, you're on. I think its origin was you're on the um, war, war field and you're a medic and you're like, go over there. We got two basket cases, which means to go get them, you better bring a basket. Because they're dead. No, they're in pieces. Uh, yeah, no, and they're still alive. Uh, Otherwise, they wouldn't tell you to go get them. Yeah. And so you're that's a basket. How many basket cases did you have? And now it then was co-opted. I believe this is the order, not the other way around. Co-opted into, if you are a quadriplegic, the, your shorthand was your basket case. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel good now about calling your aunt a basket case? <laughs> Just because she has cats? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. No, the the language, fucking language is fascinating, and it's brutal, some of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, gypsies I didn't mind, because the fucking gypsies all try to take my wallet in Italy, the fucking little kids. I, it literally was like I was a moose surrounded by wolves that would just lash out at two kids, they'd back up, meanwhile two were coming at, at me from behind. It was crazy. Well, I'm, Anthony Clark used to have this joke. He goes, the gypsies in Europe will come at you, and they're so desperate They'll hand you a baby so your hands are <laughs> occupied and then take your wallet. So here's a little tip. If you're traveling in Europe and somebody hands you a baby, swat it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> but there's a great book called Tinkers about um, about gypsies. Ah. It's real. I think it won the- Snatch uh, was the was the Brad Pitt movie. Oh, right. I think Tinkers won the uh, Pulitzer Prize, as a matter Ooh. of fact. Yeah. Oh, by the way, a little call back to uh, the coronavirus. Uh, in entertainment, Contagion, the 2011, I think it's a Soderbergh movie, yeah, is number eight on the iTunes charts ahead of Parasite mm. on the movie streaming and rentals. Speaking of movie streaming and rentals, uh, there's a few winners on there that you may have missed last year that I highly recommend. You Tell and I me. both loved a movie called Queen and Slim. Yes, I did like it. It was uh, kind well of done. a Bonnie and Clyde movie about this couple that's on the run after he kills a cop because he's about to be killed by a cop. But uh, you know how it is with the African-Americans and the cops. They just can't seem to get along. <laughs> uh, and look, the both sides have good people. Oh, boy. Um, I saw a movie... Uh, called The Way Back. Ben Affleck is an alcoholic trying to come back. And uh, I wanted to like it, and I was really liking it a third of the way in. It is a well-done movie. Mm. Holy, all right, so very briefly, basketball coach. So then they show it like, get out there. You got to get out. And he's like, ready? And this is going to be their big comeback. You know, like it's like, one, two, three, go. And it's like, oh, please don't make me watch these kids. And all of a sudden, it would go, one, two, three, go. And it would just freeze. And then the color would kind of become muted, and then they just put the score up that they lost that game. Oh, good. It was really effective, and I appreciated it. The story, I'm thinking about story a lot lately because I'm going to try to write a movie. So, I'm, of course, instead of writing, I'm reading a lot of books on how to write a movie. Yeah, and what they say is instead of shitting on a movie, ask yourself how you would fix it. It's a tough question. You can't just say, I'd make them more likable. It's like, how? Mm -hmm. And this lost its way a little. And also, he didn't drink, whatever. I don't want to so give it. this review of the movie. I didn't want, right. That's true. Anyway, it's not as good as Rotten Tomato says. I guess that's, I saved your money, viewers. I, I you saved your money. Uh, there was a time when I really liked Ben Affleck. It didn't last long. Huh. And now I find him unwatchable. I shouldn't, I, look, I, I don't want to be, like him. I don't want to be the fucking mid level comedian that shits on high level actors. Who, who am I? Who am I? And if I yeah. saw Ben Affleck, I'd be so far up his ass. He'd have to fucking. He'd have to get a goddamn pair of tweezers and get me out of there. Yeah. But just go back to shitting on Audrey Hepburn <laughs> or Whoopi. <laughs> I don't think I shit on her. I just watched The Color Purple with my daughter. I've never seen it. Oh, if you ever need to cry. I hate the Lakers. It is St it is Steven uh, Spielberg, so it's a little corny. Yeah. It's a lot corny. Mm, right. But if you want to cry, it's good. Yeah. What did I hear is a really tearjerker? I forget. Oh, as long as we're in entertainment, I will say this. Uh, of course, this is old guy news. We should have a section called old guy news. Yeah. I rewatched the other day. I only put it on for a little because um, David Byrne hosted Saturday. He was a musical was guest great. on Saturday Night Live. It. And it was really great. And I'm like, you know what? I want to go back, see that exact song you just did. I want to see it in 19, you know, 84. I want to see Stop Making Sense. All right. 
watch Stop Making Sense. Just do it. Whoever's listening to this, just do it. Even if you think you've seen it. Jonathan Demi directed it. It was shot at, I didn't know this, at the Pantages Theater. I'd always heard it was shot at Dartmouth. But I think they had a warm-up show there or something for it. It is the best concert movie. I put it above the last waltz. It's it's that good. He comes out, he starts, it starts with a boombox and his guitar. He does one instrument at a time. The second song has two people. Third song has three people. And by the way, I then by the middle of the concert, it's so well shot, by the way. And here's the headline. Buried deep in my tail. He doesn't cut, 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 cut. The, he'll stay on backup singers for like 30 seconds. And you're not even seeing David Byrne sing. And it's so effective. It's so effective. It's such, it's literally art. It's a piece of art, that movie. And the music, the Talking Heads are just the most underrated band in history. I didn't even know. Pauline Kael, the greatest maybe film reviewer of all time, literally goes, it's near perfection. Mm. I didn't even know she reviewed it. Mm. It's so great. Uh, and by the way, halfway through, last thing I'll say about it, I was like, when did Graceland come out? And I looked it up. Graceland came out like 15 months later or like two years later. Paul Simon's album. Paul Simon's album uh, with uh, Lady Smith Black Mombazu from Africa. Very percussion, obviously driven. I am telling you, he was so inspired by Stop Making Sense and by, by David Byrne and The Talking Heads. Mm. There is so much percussion and international flavor in that concert well yeah. there you have it mike There's... gibbons strongly recommending you put everything down right now and i say we put it down and get to the business section are we should we do sports now let's do sports first let me change pages we will, we will sports obviously we have not spoken that much considering it's all anybody talks about about this SARS virus that's going around, but it's really affecting sports, empty Corona? stadiums. Corona. <laughs> um, they're playing soccer matches in Europe with no crowds. Right. Which is insane. So the fatalities have like skyrocketed to zero. No, they're fighting outside the stadium. They're still showing up. Uh, or plummeted to zero. Oh, they're, still, they're, they're killing each other at home? Yeah. All right, good. Poor hooligans, what are they doing? I- Oh, by the way, are you allowed to say I'm hooligans not, anymore? I'm not even going to shave my head today. Yeah. To protest. <laughs> I went to, actually, I went to a soccer game in Barcelona. We saw Barcelona, and we saw Messi play. Whoa. And, and that's my son's team, and he's a, obviously a yeah. big soccer guy and love Messi, and we get to see Messi score a goal. But let me tell you something. Soccer crowds in Spain, they sit down. Nobody stands up during the game. They don't get up until halftime, and then they they get up orderly and go to the restroom. They take out their sandwiches. Are they unwrap serious? them in Spain. They clap. They don't. They yeah, yeah. You know, I heard the story. It was a great story where um, Italy was. I think they were away. They were definitely away, and I think it was Spain where they first heard dun 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 dun. dun. The uh, White Stripes riff, which was became huge in soccer, Italy took it home. And then that there was a really great article and I think an NPR story written about <clears throat> it became the number one ringtone in Rome. Oh, yeah. And most people had no idea th- where it came from. They just knew that that was the giant chance. Do you know what the new now. ringtone is in Italy? Oh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. I like it. All right. Also. Uh, Is that just American? Taps? I think so. So, like, if you did that in another country, like, you're you're sort of, you're burning them, you know, in a way. Like, yeah. you're, like you're, you're, you're about to lose. Dun, dun, dun. Would they be like, what is he doing? Yeah. Like, what does that mean? I think so. Dun, dun. Would they know that one? Is that American? That one they'd know. From horror movies? Yeah, they'd uh, know that. Why? Because of our movies? Or did we steal all these? No, I, well, I would say some of the music you hear in like Spaghetti Westerns was done by, what's that guy's name? Uh, well, there's a bunch of them, but the, the biggest one was- uh, Starts with an M? Yeah, I forget his name. Anyway, Mar- the, yeah. a lot of those songs that you would associate with like mood that you would recognize, Yeah, I'm sure are very international. Yeah. Um, Soccer empty, March Madness. They're saying now yep. uh, may do with no crowds. 
they're coming up with contingency plans. Our friend uh, Pete Scott works uh, in conjunction with it, and he's at Turner Sports and everything. So he's like, yeah, they, they everyone's in a panic. J- J- the Olympics, obviously, like the you couldn't think of a more efficient way to get everyone sick like than the Olympics. Everyone fly from every country, all come here, shack up in really close quarters, so much so that the uh, Olympic Village, we have to give out condoms for free because you guys are... But first, deplete all your energy by competing. Then fucking co-mingle like crazy. Now everyone fly home. Yeah. <laughs> are you kidding me? In coach. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Right. Yeah. I did uh I did lights out with David Spade last week and the topic was whether they were gonna cancel the Japanese Olympics. And I called you as I always do. I call you and I ask you to give me some jokes for it. Yeah. And you gave me a great one, which was um you know, you gotta be careful going to the Olympics. You never know what you're gonna come home with. Look at Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> You'll never know what you catch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And so uh <laughs> I did that and it got some groans. Good. God, that was exactly what we're going for. I went for all grown jokes. It wouldn't get a joke. It wouldn't get a groan from Caitlin. I've now worked with her twice. Yeah. The roast was one, and I just worked with her, and uh, she loves that. She told a joke. You want to hear it? Yeah. She goes, I heard I heard a good joke lately. And she's with comedians. She's with Nikki Glaser and Burke Kreischer. And she goes, I heard a joke, so all of us roll our eyes. Meaning, like, also, this is awesome because it's going to be a horrible joke probably. Turns out it was good. She um, said she was playing. She plays a lot of golf and she was playing with one of the top ranked women or whatever. And uh, the woman was really down on herself. She's like, what's the matter? She's like, oh, it's my game. It sucks. She's like, I don't know what she goes. Uh, she goes, the, whole, the golf hole to me right now is like a Kardashian girl. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, nothing white will go in. <laughs> really? Caitlin yeah. said that? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's what I mean. There's a real, you know. I heard she told it. this joke. There were two flies sitting on a piece of shit, and one of them farts, and the other one goes, hey, I'm eating. <laughs> uh, by the way- She didn't say that. I just I even, to tell that joke really I like bad. It. I even cleaned up the joke a little bit. It was like, the golf hole's like a Kardashian pussy. That was literally what she said. That's awesome. Nothing white. I can't get it. And she did that on tape for on the airing of tape, the show? It's going to air on Netflix. God bless her. Yep. Um. All right, let's get to uh, let's get to business. Yes. Now the bear the bear market they're saying is starting the uh, uh, stock market. Uh, again, I don't know when you're listening to this, but today it went down two thousand points, which is the biggest drop in one day ever of the uh, S and P. So, our friend Mike Gibbons, right here who is famous over the years yeah. for uh, shorting the market with his stocks, which means you're be- you're betting against the market. You're which usually means I, I win for a few days, and then I, I love it. I get lust, and I get greedy, and I stay too long, and the fucking dumb stock market takes a undeserved bounce up, and I get wiped out. Every time. Every wiped time. Wiped out every time. And for the first time, in the 30 years I've known him, you didn't have stocks for the first 25 well, years I knew so you. So far, I mean, but you uh, you you bet against the market two weeks ago, and you are making a small fortune. I can give it away. It's a public ticker, and I have no, I have no. Well, I own it. I guess that's the disclosure. But I don't think that affects this ticker symbol. People buying it, I don't think affects it. Believe it or not. All right, give it to him. It's called TZA. Tom Zebra. Uh, no, yeah, uh, Anthony. Uh, what I can't, I should have you. Do you memorize the alpha thing? Like, no. alpha, yeah, it seems like something we should do. Alpha, beta, Charlie. Chai, I think it's chai, Charlie. I think I don't know. Anyway, wait, are you talking about the Greek or the no or military, the military? Military. Oh, anyway. Oh, no, no, I'm not talking about the alphabet. So, anyway, it's TZA, and the opposite one is TNA. What you do is you buy one of those, and it goes uh, three times. Uh, it's juiced three times the direction the market goes. So if you buy TNA, that means you're going positive. So if the market goes up, uh, you know, 2%, you go up 6% that day or more. So today I own TZA. I went up 30% today. All your money tripled. 
Uh, no, uh, it went I, up 30%. Not not all my money, but yeah. no, it went up 30%. Wow. And it's not all my money, but I did take a big swing at it just because I'm making up for all the years I always, always, always lose. And I don't trade. This was the first thing I bought in years, or two years probably. How much of this money would you say you'll give to charity? Well, will charity pay me if I lose? Because... <laughs> Well, if you were Wall Street, the government would pay you if you lost. They don't. Because they're already looking for money. Wall Street is already looking to the Fed. Well, they got the- uh, They're the biggest crybabies yeah. ever. So the everyone's complaining and bitching and moaning. The S&P 500 is still up for the last 52 weeks, you stupid idiots. And they all hate Bernie Sanders and his socialist leanings. As soon as this happens, all they're doing is screaming for government intervention. Mm. Lower the rate. You got to help us. You got to give us these incentives, these packages. Bail us out. Bail us out. The World Bank is starting to uh, come into uh, Asia to bail them out. It's it's all. There's such. The, the S&P 500 was up 28% last year. So now you have to give a little back and you're f bitching and moaning. It's yeah, crazy. Because you're not going to get your uh, billion dollar bonuses. But God it is it. gambling, man. When you buy one of these fucking three times, it's called a weighted ETF. You buy, Like, for instance, at the end of today, a good move might have been buying TNA, which goes up three. Because you think it'll bounce tomorrow. If it goes up a thousand tomorrow, you'll make, you know, 20 percent or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. You heard it here. Mike Gibbons tells you, watch the documentary Stop Making Sense <laughs> and buy yourself some TNA for tomorrow. Too late. Also, outsiders, we lose. Like, for instance, TZA is an example, just to calm everybody down. TZA closed at, uh, I would say, uh, f uh, let's say 50 on Friday. It opened today at 61. So where's an investor like you and me getting in there? You're not. You just, you can't get in. You're going to get in at 62, 3, 4, probably way above that because it's sort of They've racing. already factored in that it's going to go Cause, down. Because- I don't know who these people are, but you can trade futures. Maybe, who are these people? Maybe other markets like Asia and Europe can buy it while the Over market's the closed here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's all rigged. Just it is It is all rigged. Take your money and uh, have some fun with it. Yeah, gambling. Uh, finally, in business, Bill Gates. Of course, this comes from the private sector. He is funding uh, at-home testing kits for the coronavirus. Um, because they're not available from the government. So the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, have put some money into um, this project. It's called a thermometer. <laughs> do you have a fever? <laughs> Fucking lay low. Right. And also, by the way- They can't do anything if you have. It's the flu. Yeah. And if you're worried about- they, I, mean, I can't get wipes. I can't buy disinfected wipes. Get a fucking napkin and some rubbing alcohol. Boom. You got it. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Honestly. Wear Piss some gloves. Them. So, you know, the other thing is like, oh my God, I got to get tested for coronavirus. Oh, I have it. What do you do now? Oh, we send you that building over there where 60,000 Americans die of the flu every year. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. 45 million people got the flu two years ago. 61,000 died. Damn. And 860,000, I think. I think I have this right. Almost a million people were hospitalized with the flu two years ago. Mm. Last year was a little bit of a down year. I think I think this year is up though. But in other words, you're going, you know, whatever. You're going to a germ factory if you have it. I guess they quarantine you. I don't, I don't know. But self quarantine, right? Isn't that the move? Self quarantine, and I'm about to go to Cuba in three weeks with my family and my mom, who's 78. Ooh. And uh, I'm starting to wonder if Cuba's going to let us in. They may say you're from California. We're not letting you in the country. For a number of reasons. Yeah. Right. Um, and then we're supposed to go to Ireland. And again, we fucking rented this place a year ago in Ireland. And I don't think we're getting the money back. We got all our plane tickets bought. We're not getting there. Are they giving money back on the, on plane tickets? I don't know. But he, the flights might be canceled. Right. So cross your fingers for that. Hmm. Um, let's, but that's the economic impact. You just described it. The planes. Well, the hotels, the tra just yeah. travel, and then all the business travel, even the superfluous stuff, like even dumb agencies here in California, but big ones are like, new policy for a while, no more face-to-face -face meetings. You have to yeah. do it over Skype. Right. Or, you know, whatever. And comedy clubs, don't forget, 
Come out to the comedy clubs. You will not get infected. Just relax, especially if you're young. I don't want to be the guy that poo-poos this coronavirus. But the truth is, if you're if you're under 50 and you're in decent shape, you're fine. Especially you're going to be fine at uh, Copper Blues in Phoenix on the 19th to the 21st. And uh, also, uh, I'll be at Stand Up Live in Phoenix on the 22nd of March. Boston, Massachusetts. Laugh Boston, April 2nd through the 4th. And then I will be at Boise at uh, Liquid Laughs on the 16th through the 18th of April. And then April 23rd through 25, Sacramento Punchline. Come on out. Check out those dates. Uh, Let's finish it out with the uh, Sunday comics. All right. (laughs) You love it, Mike. You love it. Well, this one, this first one. You gave me a sneak peek of one of them. This first one is uh, Hagger the Horrible. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, I mean, and I don't know how many people remember the old uh, the old comic strips. They mean a lot to me because I watched, I read. They were my first exposure to comedy as a child, oh. reading the comic strips, and I loved them. And Hagger the Horrible is one about uh, an old Viking. He's a rapist, and he murders people, and they have a cute comic about him. So in this one, his wife, who's wearing a helmet with the horns coming out of it, is sitting and having coffee with another woman. And uh, the other woman says, my husband gives me an allowance. And his wife, who I believe is named Helga, says, that's nice. And the woman goes, I know. It's like I'm being paid to plan my own escape. Because she's being abused domestically. (laughs) Yeah. I mean... (laughs) But that's fine. Aren't they cavemen? <laughs> they're, they're Vikings. Oh, Vikings. Sorry. The Vikings. There's also a caveman one, right? But uh, yeah, all right, Vikings. That's fine. That's fair. Isn't their MO rape and pillage? Isn't that literally Absolutely. what it says? That's about, what they, like that's what they pat on the on the top of the door as they go out of the ship? Like rape and <laughs> pillage. Right. Yeah. And, and that's why if you get your ancestor DNA done, everybody's got a little bit of Asian or a little bit of uh, Nordic Ah. Because it was either Genghis Khan, pronounced by the way Genghis Khan, even though people will fucking oh, argue really? with me about that. Oh, it's like a GIF. Jank- <laughs> <laughs> it's a GIF. <laughs> and uh, peop- but uh, you you'll get a little Asian from Genghis Khan. They raped and pillaged around the fucking. You ever see a map of where the uh, the Mongols? Oh uh, yeah. Well, conquered? my dad has like black hair from four Ireland. Continents. That's Spain, right? Isn't it the Armadas that went up there and fucked Ireland? Yeah. Yeah. The Black Irish, they call them. I wish I got tanner skin because of it. I, I I I missed out on that. My dad has tanner skin. Yeah, you look for that silver lining. Yep. This one is the uh, family circus. <laughs> how was how <laughs> was the rape, great grandma? <laughs> Will I be tanner? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what it looked like. Tell me what it looked like. Uh, this is. Um... Can he grow a beard? I can't. <laughs> Why do I suck at soccer? <laughs> this is Family Circus, which is all oh. I love because it's just one frame. It's just one frame, and the mom, who's uh, kind of a milf. Oh boy! You know, look at the, look at this picture of her. Yeah, she's you know she's got like that uh, short Liza Minnelli haircut, good breast. Yeah, I don't, it looks like David Byrne, but uh, I look. It also looks like she photoshopped her waist smaller, like yeah. they do now on uh, selfies, but. So the boy, and I think his name is Donnie. He's the main character in Ugh. Family Circus. Everybody hates Donnie. He's like the Mickey Mouse of cartoons. And he says to the mother, Mommy, did you used to be sexy? She's bending down, listening to him, and he's holding a bowl? Yeah, she's holding a bowl. So With on a, a mixing spoon in it. Honestly, what the fuck? Yeah. How can you let that go out the door? Like, he's just robbing new... By the way, that frame, you might as well write... 50 fucking things that the kid says. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the bowl. Mm-hmm. There's no story. Yeah. It doesn't leave you wanting to know more. Right. It's just, oh, that kid said something that he didn't realize was kind of inappropriate. Mommy, was daddy uh, your second choice? Like, just shit him out. Just fucking yeah. shit him out. Write 50 in a, in a half hour. And then a giant. Such, it makes me, you know how fucking rich this guy is? His name is Jeff Keen, and his name is Giant in the corner. He wants you to know. And then on the left side, it says Bill Keen Incorporated. Yeah, that means that's his son or grandson still living off this the grandfather's bullshit. 
distributed by King Features Syndication. Well, that's the yeah, that's the that's the son. That's part of that's King World, I think. But uh, no, I think the guy. Oh, I see. It's right, King. Right, right. But it's why are they? Maybe listen. I don't want you know. Maybe it's really sad. Maybe there are people who are like ah. Uh, and that means something to them every day. What could explain that piece of shit yeah. being in a national? Where was that? In the na- it's syndicated, right? And that's once a week. You've got fucking seven days to come up with one frame, and that's your frame. Yeah. Oh my god. We got to do our own comic strip every week, mommy. I thought this was just for haircuts. There, that's <laughs> ten times fucking better. He's holding a bowl. At least address your illustration. I'm so fucking furious. Or, or, Mommy, can I lick the bowl? Daddy says he likes licking the bowl. <laughs> and he says you like when he licks the bowl. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Maybe it's harder than it seems. All right. Finally, speaking of sexy, let's get to it. You guys know this is how we always end Sunday papers. And it's Blondie. Oh, that little vixen. That little latex vixen. What was that? <laughs> Did you see the Brit Hume story? Oh, yes. That was great. Brit Hume, if you, if you missed this story, go back and find it. He's a uh, newscaster. On Fox News. He is officially the crustiest old white guy. Yeah. He's like, like that's how he talks. And he showed a screenshot of a story that he was doing, that he was doing. And he didn't realize that you could see the open tabs on his internet browser. And one of them said, and I, I should have written it down, but it's like. Vinyl, vinyl vixen. vixens. Sexy, sexy vinyl, vinyl vi- vixens. Yeah. And uh, it spread everywhere. And that's it. Whatever reputation you've built up in the 50 years you've been in the business is gone. I don't know. At this point, won't he get credit for it? Because he's so ancient and old. And I just know he's going to have a lot of nicknames. I know there's going to be a lot of... Also, is he married? Now he has to buy two of them. <laughs> yeah, right. Fast. Yeah. So, She's like, uh, how am I going to get this on in the wheelchair? Dagwood walks in the door, this fucking guy, and he's wearing a bow tie, so he looks like a dick. His hair is slicked back. He's got that one cowlick that goes backwards. And uh, he gets, of course, this big smooch from Blondie, and she's up on her tiptoes while she kisses him, accentuating her calves. You've seen her calves. They're like yeah, bowling they're pins. They're pretty great, yeah. And uh, and the dog is the blue dog is always staring right at them because he knows they're gonna fuck. He knows they're fucking coming. <laughs> That's what dogs can sense. And she they says, sense "Fear and future fucking." So Dagwood says, "Did you and Tootsie put a lot of fucking effort into that name back in the fifties when this thing started? Did you and Tootsie have fun shopping for new shoes at the mall?" And she says, "Actually, it was a little disappointing." And then she t- in the second frame she takes a step back, allowing you to see. Breasts that have a shelf. You could put a fucking fishbowl on the top of her tits, yeah, and it would sit flat. <laughs> and they, they, and she's wearing a tight sweater that cinches in at the waist. And she says, "We walked into the shoe store and found exactly what we were looking for." Dagwood confused. Why was that disappointing? Third frame. Now she's walking, and she says, "Where's the challenge in that?" And that's what I love about these 50s I comics. I almost asked, wait, say it again, because I kind of couldn't follow it. I, never mind. I withdraw the question. I don't care. <laughs> I just love how they depict women in these in these old oh. comic strips. Yeah. How was your day shopping? Well, yeah. it's better than fucking Haggard's wife, who gets beaten and dragged into the bowel <laughs> of a ship or whatever the fuck happens over yeah. there. Rubbing salve on her from the venereal diseases her husband brings back from the Orient. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, we've done it. Mike Gibbons, we've done our first Sunday Papers. We've done Sunday Papers before, but this is the first one in what will be a series. That's right. If you didn't know this, Mike and I are going to start doing Sunday Papers on a regular basis. We're going to do a couple. Uh, we're going to put out there for you guys to enjoy for free. And then we're going to invite you to, uh, to, to support us through Patreon. And so the Fitz Dog Radio Podcast will go out every week, uh, as it's always been. But then the uh, Sunday papers will go out. I, we, we probably do what every other week. Maybe we'll try to do it. We'll see. Maybe if there's more? a demand, if there's a demand, then we'll do it even I more. Need, I need the money to short the market. Yeah. So uh, get involved, and we'll let you know how to get on Patreon after these first couple. And we look forward to you taking this journey with you. Thank you for listening, however many people you are. Yes. Thank you so much. And uh, 
Thank you to our fine producer. I assume she's going to be producing this. She produces uh, Fitz Dog Radio, Andrea Giletti. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Back in the news. <laughs> Is that our tag? Is that the tag? I don't know. We don't even know if we it's a title. We need a tag. <laughs> back in what is back? We'll are we still recording? Yeah. What is back in the news? We mean? need an ending. I don't know. All right. Happy Monday. But it's not. I don't know. Yeah. Sunday papers out. Sunday Closed. Pa- <laughs> Kindling pile. There it is. Yeah. Just do that. Throw it in the fire. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs>